Well, joining us today is David and Jamie Womack, bird trainers from birdtricks.com. Welcome to the show, Dave and Jamie. Hey, thanks for having us. Well, what a fun job you guys have, training parrots. Uh, yeah, we're actually on a flight trip right now in Nevada with some new flight students that we have. We're working with a red-fronted macaw, getting it flying outside. It's a fun job. It's very rewarding. And seeing a look on not even the birds' faces, but the people's faces when they overcome certain things with their parrots, they're rewarding on a, on a very high level. As you're probably aware, you know, birds are the third most popular pet in the world, but the number one most rehomed. And so our motto has always been to save parrots one person at a time. And so we love that we get to work with people one-on-one -on -one and be able to help them achieve their dreams of free flight or just simply getting their bird out of the cage without biting. And we work with the whole spectrum, but it's an absolutely incredible journey to get to work with people so closely to help their birds. Oh, so people are, uh, you're not just teaching people how to train their bird to do, to perform tricks, but, but also behavioral issues, I guess, uh, you get into then. Yeah, I would say our main focus is usually behavioral, just because a lot of people, they either struggle getting their bird to step up without biting them. They struggle getting them every member in the family. Um, but we really range anything that people are striving to do. A lot of the times, teaching tricks is just a way to form a strong bond that leads to deeper relationship on a better level. So trick training is one of those, what we actually refer to as bond building games, because it's a great way to spend quality time with your bird and gain those positive experiences. Oh, so wonderful. our foundation all started in trick training back when I was in high school. Uh, I'm actually a professional illusionist as well. And so in high school, I was entering competitions around the world in my bird act. And at the time I was just working with doves. And my parents had a pet macaw, and I thought, you know, it'd be really cool if I could train this bird to be in the show, and it would it would help me win the gold medal next year, and you know, achieve these bigger goals. Hmm. But what I didn't realize that blue and gold macaw was. And so in high school, I set out to try to learn how to train these birds and get it into my show. And then through training, we realized, wow, all of a sudden I speak the same language as this bird. They became very friendly. We use training tricks as kind of the method to bridge that gap between animal communication and human communication. Just like if we went to China and we tried to order off a menu, we can't read Chinese and they may not speak English, but we can all point to the picture of the chow mein or whatever we're wanting to order. And <laughs> trick training becomes that language that that both of us can speak clearly and it makes it so that you can move forward and have a good relationship with that bird oh, how, how interesting what sort of tricks can you teach your bird it, it, what would you say is the the easiest trick for the beginner the, the, the first trick that someone could teach their bird you know a lot of our training actually stems from going with what that particular bird likes to naturally do so we work with a lot of birds that may be natural ground foragers where they like to be on the ground and they are very playful on the ground. So for a galah or rose-breasted cockatoo, a great first trick might be teaching them to roll over because it's something that they naturally already are inclined to do. Or with a kaik, they naturally like to hang upside down from things. So you can kind of work with their natural instincts of what they offer and kind of shape those into what you would like to, them to be. Whereas instead of a kayak hanging off a branch is what it would normally do, you could teach it to hang upside down from your finger. So it really varies and depends on that bird's characteristics and what it is naturally inclined to do. Some birds are very social, so maybe the first trick you teach is simply to step onto anybody and pose for a photo. Um, you can really take it anywhere. I've trained one of my galahs in less than two minutes how to wave and that's because she had learned many different things so we had like Dave said that communication and that language of training where we just understood each other so much that it doesn't take a lot of effort to communicate what I want to very clearly so it all kind of depends on the person and the bird and those natural instincts because we love working with nature so we want to train things that the bird finds fun. Well can, can any parrot species be trained then from a parakeet to a macaw from the smallest to the biggest or uh, from, from what you're saying, it's not necessarily the species, but the individual bird. Each bird is is different to be trained. Well, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Every type of parrot can be trained. And, you know, going down to one of the smallest ones being a budgie, and one of the most common household pets or first pets mm -hmm. is a little budgie or parakeet. And we actually, we were performing on a tour on a cruise ship for six weeks, and we trained a budgie how to do a, an entire show-stopping routine. And the beautiful thing about even working with those tiniest little budgies, you have a good training session. The next morning, 
that bird will have actually slept on it, thought about it, and progressed further without actually working with that bird overnight. You know, wherever you left off, it'll go a little bit further the next day. So even if these tiny little birds that you don't think are very um, trainable, they are incredibly trainable. And then we've worked all the way up to large macaws as far as the bird species go, um, the, the full gambit. We've worked with little lovebirds, finches, parakeets, hmm. African greys, conyers, macaws, cockatoos, and just the pretty much a full spectrum, and they can all be taught. Now, here's the other myth is, you know, you always hear you can't teach an old dog new tricks, right. and with parrots, you can teach them tricks all throughout their entire life, and it's really, uh, it's something that in captivity they really thrive on, and if you think about it, in the bird world in the wild, birds spend their entire day flying around, expending physical energy, and then foraging, expending mental energy in the hopes of maybe finding food. So in captivity, a lot of people make the mistake of just putting them in a cage and giving them 24-hour access to food. Uh, now, they should have 24-hour access to water, but they're hardwired to be able to earn their food in the wild. And so training offers this way to naturally stimulate the bird through allowing them to earn some of those high-value treats so that they, they have opportunities to earn their favorite things, and it actually makes them just a better pet all around. I see. Well, I know in the world of dog training, if you if you want to teach a dog a trick, there are uh, various steps, kind of a foundation training that they learn first that leads to the next step. Is, is it the same with a bird? Do you, do you start at one point and then kind of add different training to it as you go along? Does that make sense? Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, there's a good starting point that we usually recommend to a broader audience of all people, and that would be something that we call touch or target training. It's simply where you teach the animal to touch the end of a target. You'll mm -hmm. see this used with horses to teach them to go into trailers to overcome their fe fear of trailers. You'll see them used with dolphins to teach them how to do flips, and you see it at theme parks with different animals or even zoos just to be able to do some natural husbandry type of things and do vet exams where you just simply target an animal to a specific place. And that's one of the first things we teach, and that's so that people can establish an easy or simple trick um, that allows them to move their bird where they need it to go in a hands-off way where they aren't scared of getting bit and the animal isn't nervous about having to communicate through biting. So it's a really great way to teach something initially that works for everybody. It's a very universal training technique that has a lot of different areas where you can apply it. And I want to take it back even a step further and let your listeners in on a little secret. If your listeners are having challenges training their bird new tricks or any tricks or even just getting the bird out of the cage, where it really starts is the diet. And you could go on to any pet shop, any, uh, you know, any mail order, uh, try not to name the names, but if you want to order bird food online, you're typically going to see something that's like, oh, parrot food, well-balanced, doctor recommended, and it's just basically feeding the bird junk and treats. Hmm. So one of the things we really work with with our clients is making sure that they get their bird onto a proper healthy diet um, because then what happens is we don't use hunger as the motivator. We use the value of the treat as the motivator. So if the bird's getting treats 24-7 because you were sold a junk diet, then it's very difficult to be able to get the bird to do anything for that same treat that it's getting in its diet already. Mm -hmm. But by switching the bird to a really healthy diet, now the bird wants to earn those treats and, and it has a higher value. And so it really starts with the diet. And then we go into, as Jamie was saying, kind of the target and the touch training. So it's all uh, reward-based training then right well it's you we're definitely using the, the entire equipment for operant conditioning so primarily our focus is yes positive or as we refer to it as plus reinforcement um, or occasionally minus reinforcement and we we kind of change the dialect to that because a lot of people have had a good experience it's a positive experience well positive punishment isn't a good experience so we we use plus and minus interchangeably is how we explain it, but we do mostly focus on the reinforcement category. And that's another thing that kind of goes back to what I said in the very beginning is it really depends on the bird. So some birds motivated by a different type of reinforcer that might just be, it flies to you because it wants to spend time with you and it wants to be with you. Um, others are really excited by the interaction and maybe praise and they really respond well, while other birds aren't. So something that we highly encourage is for people to figure that out about their bird. Does your bird respond? praise does it 
respond well to treats, what is your primary reinforcer and what's your secondary. This really helps you achieve great success once you really figure that out for your particular bird. How, how long does it typically take uh, to, to teach a bird a trick, especially their, their first one? I don't know if it gets easier after the first one, but uh, are we talking weeks, months, or how long typically? Oh, no. Usually... Yeah, usually this is within a day. A lot of the videos on our really? YouTube channel are, are master classes, and those happen within just a few minutes. You can train um, a bird to spin around. We've done that in a master, which is the course over about three hours, oh. and it's not working with a bird the entire three hours um, because you want to keep those sessions under five minutes. So really these are small increments of time that are just used in a very powerful way, hmm. if that kind of makes sense. I, is it? used repetitively i mean do they learn from repetition or is it just like the first couple of tries and then they got it yeah it really depends on the bird so if you're working with a naturally curious bird then target training can come really easy all you do is present the target they will naturally be curious enough to touch it you can click and give a reward and it's as simple as that and you just repeat it and you do the repetitions and they learn really quickly that they start to move to touch that target other birds though that might be scared of the target you may have to either one, change the target to something that it's not fearful of, or work through and desensitize to that, maybe use some enticement by placing a treat closer to it, or reward in really small approximations where the bird's just simply looking at the target, the bird's being okay with being close to it, and then maybe you even bump the target just lightly against the bird and click and reward. And that might take a little bit longer, but for the most part, target training is something you can train in one single session. Well, well, how do you work with a bird that, that is very shy or even fearful, that, uh, and perhaps that you haven't even uh, uh, hand-trained them yet? You know? I mean, how, how do you deal with, with, with a bird that's that extreme? So there's a lot of different ways that you can approach that, and it's still you would, you would like to use food-based or treat-based training if possible, but sometimes if you look at the quadrant of reinforcement, Sometimes it might be reinforcing for you to leave, or as we refer to as minus reinforcement. So in one of our examples, we, we call it the power pause. And so let's say the bird is too fearful for you to be able to get close enough to give it a treat. Mm -hmm. Well, then using treat or food is not going to be a valuable way to actually train the bird. So what we do is we slowly approach the cage because there's some distance, whether it's 200 feet or two feet, where the bird's okay with your presence. So we'll slowly approach the cage until we see the first signs of fear and we pause. And we don't move a muscle until the bird ignores us, relaxes, fluffs up, does anything other than focus on its fear towards us. In that moment, we, we use clickers a lot. So we would click and the reward for the bird is us leaving, which is technically negative reinforcement or minus reinforcement. Hmm. And so we can use that over the course of five minutes to be able to get close enough to the bird to then be able to start using its favorite treat. We also, as I was starting to mention, in a master class we put on in Salt Lake City, Utah, we worked with a client whose bird didn't, was not receptive to treats, and it was very aggressive towards the wife but loved the husband. Hmm. And so what we actually did is we had a cue that we gave the husband that would make the husband leave the room, and then we would have, whenever the husband heard a click, the husband would come back into the room. And so we used the reinforcement of the behavior that we wanted from the bird and the reinforcement of the husband entering or exiting to shape that bird's behavior. And over a three-hour class, that bird was trained to spin on cue to get the husband to come back in the room. We never touched the bird and never used a single treat. So we're really making use of the entire training quadrant. But where our challenge is and our goal, and I think something that we do pretty well at, is we teach the client or we teach the bird owner how to read the body language so they know when certain tools. Wow. Oh. My goodness. Well, it sounds as if they, if, if you do it right, the bird learns uh, the the trick pretty quickly. And uh, does it stay with them for their entire life? I mean, uh, uh, for, for many birds that you're looking at 30, 40 plus years, does it need to be reinforced over time? Yeah, and I think you hit the nail on the head because you kind of revealed a little secret that we're not training the bird, we're training the owner. <laughs> ah. uh, and if, if the owner is very uh, knowledgeable, or not even knowledgeable, very astute and very observant to the bird's body language and the subtleties to make the training go faster, they will have immediate success. Um, where a lot of the times the bird's frustration or slow it down is caused from the owner maybe missing certain cues. Hmm. 
Mm. Um, but once it's trained, that bird will retain that for a long, long time. And even down to a budgie, sadly, on a on its deathbed, was trying to spin and give kisses because that's what it was trained to do. Uh-huh. And they'll they'll do it their entire lives. And uh, you do need some refreshers, of course. But typically, the refreshers need to come in when there's been slip-ups along the way. If somebody's giving the wrong cue or accidentally reinforcing when the bird's screaming, then you need to go back and kind of, you know, we say go back from the beginning and, and yeah, clean it up. So you kind of retrain the entire process, which happens in a fraction of the time because the bird's already gone through it. But you establish kind of, you know, wipe the chalkboard clean and rewrite the algorithm. And all of a sudden the bird's like, oh, yeah, that, I got it. And it's, it's clean and maintained. So really, I, from what you've been telling us, I, I, I presume anyone can do this. Uh, anyone can train a bird to do this if they know the right structure, the, the steps to take, that you, uh, and you help teach the person these things. But there really isn't anyone that w- wouldn't be able to do this with their bird, I presume. Exactly, and that's what our YouTube channel is about. It's about encouraging the person at home with their bird to take a deeper look at their bird and put the effort in. Um, we don't want to encourage people to go out and get a baby bird and start over just thinking it's easy because they're baby birds. We want people to realize that they can do the training that they see us doing online at home with their very own bird. We even have our six-year-old daughter constantly on our channel showing her training and working with our birds. We often take on what's called project birds. They are birds from owners or rescues where they've just been kind of given up on. They're really hard cases. And we will take those birds on for a certain amount of time to get them to a point where they and the owner can bond again or where they can get adopted again to a great home. And Capri, our daughter, who is only six years old, has been a huge part of training these birds and getting them prepared to be adopted into forever homes. So, yes, even kids can do it. We get videos all the time of kids watching our training videos and then training their birds certain things and sending us clips. And it's really inspiring to see the young generation generation come up doing that wow. all right well it's really a, a family affair with you folks and uh, your your, your, your <laughs> kids are involved and it, it must be a very re- rewarding experience for your whole family yeah and our birds are our family and so we of course incorporate them into every aspect of our life that we possibly can which means with our child with our family you know with our parents with our you know we have certain caretakers that may need to take care of them if we ever leave and we're very close with every dynamic that we possibly can but we try to incorporate them as much as possible into our lives and that's why we're out traveling with them right now is just to make sure that they're getting the best life that they possibly can your youtube channel which uh, has a a great collection of of the uh, all the videos you've made uh you also have a website yeah we do our website is birdtricks.com and we just kind of really try to focus on all the dynamics of taking care of your bird the best you possibly can. So we just go over the proper caging and environments and enclosures that you can offer and the ones that we offer our birds indoors and outdoors. And pretty much if you can think of an avian related topic, we have it on our website. We have an extensive blog where we've hired other professionals to come and talk about different aspects of rescue and medical care and first aid and we have a lot of parrot nutrition is really a primary focus of ours. And then, of course, all of our training materials. Um, but it's also a huge thing of a, re- a free resource. So we have a lot of free downloads if people want to, you know, if they're struggling with converting their bird from an all-seed diet to a proper pellet or even onto a healthy fresh food diet. We have all those resources there available for free for people to just download and they can contact us if they need help. And, you know, that's kind of what the YouTube channel is too, is it's constantly putting out information that will hopefully stick to somebody. You know, somebody will pick up a gem on there and have an aha moment with their own bird and finally have that breakthrough moment that they've been waiting to have where they can actually progress. A lot of times people feel like their situation with their parrot is different and unique. And although there's nuances that do make it unique, that's the power behind YouTube is they'll see us working with almost every type of species of parrot out there. And they'll see the moment that they're like, oh, that reminds me of Sammy doing this. And that'll be that moment that transforms that relationship and helps save that parrot from potentially being rehomed. And so we obviously have the free resources at birdtricks.com, at youtube.com slash birdtricks. And we also have, for people that really want to become super fans and support our efforts and help support these project birds and help fund our operation of sorts, they can also uh, contribute to it over at Patreon. And that's a 
a great way where we go deeper, more in depth, and we're able to, on a month to month payment type basis, really offer even more in depth content to people who want that that extra knowledge or just in laws. Wonderful. All right. Well, well, thank you uh, so much for taking the time to speak with me today and 